So a lot of people over the years have asked me about these little spacer blocks that I use to keep my braces and other things throughout the build process from swimming off their marks when you put glue on them and, and try to clamp them in place. This really is the best way that I've found to guarantee that uh, what you're gluing down isn't going to shift even slightly off of its marks after you apply clamping pressure. So these little things that I'm calling spacers, uh, I'm not sure why I even call them that. Uh, they're really just little scrap blocks with double stick tape on one side of them. So the way I use these, as I'm dry fitting the braces, there's no glue on this now, I can position these braces one by one as I go and to hold their positions I place, I peel the backing off of these and just place four spacers on each brace. And I butt it up nice and firmly against the brace so it creates a channel the exact width of the brace for it to just click back into place in. Now with this firmly held in place, I can mark where I'm going to cut the lap joint. And again, this isn't glued down yet, this is just dry. Okay, now I can take this out, cut that lap joint, and then what I'm going to do is once the lap joint is cut on both this piece and this piece, I can do the same thing placing this, the other half of the X-brace down and referencing its position with four more spacer blocks before I glue the whole thing down. And now I've cut and fit the lap joint so I can clamp this into place and box in the rest of the X-brace with four more spacers. Okay, now with its position fully referenced by the spacer blocks, I can take this thing out and glue it down for real this time. See, it pops right out of its channels. And after I put the glue on, it's very easy to fit that right back in. Okay, glue on, and we're ready to go. And I don't throw away these scrap blocks when I'm done, I just keep reusing them. So after they're done, and I've pulled them off of the soundboard, I, I just always throw them in this little bin right here. And then to make new ones, I just peel the old tape off and put new tape right over it. Uh, sometimes it might need a little sprucing up on the sanding board, but I hardly ever even do that. I'll just put tape, this tape, double stick tape. I get it from Stu Mac and they put their name right on it as you can see there. So I'm not sure who actually makes this. I would assume it's probably a 3M product, but I don't really know. Getting a good double stick tape does matter here. The kind of stuff you get at the department store doesn't actually hold at all. Uh, another mistake you can make is using oily woods, and I've made this mistake, like ebony or rosewood. I cut up a whole bunch of little squares like this of ebony and useless. This is uh, either mahogany or sapelli 
really as long as it's not an oily wood or a soft wood because the soft woods fall apart then uh, it's good to go If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.